Kia brand our un current undergraduate project, which is named Human Brain Neuronal Fiber Connectivity Realization. This is an important project uh, in the Center for Innovation uh, through visualization and simulation in the Food Kelvin. Food Kelvin. And uh, our uh, advisor is Dr. Bing Chen. We got three team members uh, chosen over there, and uh, another player, Jimmy Zhang and me, we did say. Okay, so firstly, I want to briefly introduce our project a little bit. Uh, so as you may as you may know, we uh, we use to scan the uh, the data source of our project is scan the MI images uh, from the real hospital and the uh, biology research center, and we uh, scan these these images and generate them into a three D model. And for our project, we will use the a video software to, uh, as our research environment. And the project starts from the last year December. So basically, we will separate our uh, project into five parts, which is step one, uh, method, process, result, and uh, finally we call the conclusion. Fine. So first, uh, first the background, and uh, as you may all heard before, heard about MI before, but you may have no idea what MI is. So basically, MI is the mechanical resonance imaging. Uh, this is a this is a med medicine technique also used for the doctors and medicines uh, to check the human body human body uh, details uh, in details. And uh, for for uh, for the this technique was before people, uh, the doctors and the medicines can only get get a two dimension images, which is hard for them to distinguish the the basic part of human bodies, especially in the brain. So. Uh, the original thought why we would like to generate a 3D model for this for these images is we want to make the, these users like doctors and medicine, medicine to uh, check and uh, understand the uh, human brain part more easily. And uh, so we we uh, so uh, at last we need, we decided to uh, generate these uh, 3D, uh, 3D images from the MI images and. Uh, the, the improvement of hardware and the software also made it possible for us to build this construct, uh, to build this 3D model. And uh, the method we will, uh, in, this, in this whole project, we will mainly use, mainly use a video as our programming and the coding, coding so software. A video is a, a powerful, powerful 3D software for SVG corporation. It, product, uh, it provides us not only uh, powerful 3D engine, but also a uh, uh, friendly user interface for us to build the, this project. And you, as you may see, we imported the MI data and uh, generate, generate the, the entities and uh, methods into, into objects. Uh, therefore, we can uh, easily understand the relationships be between the entities and the method. And uh, next, I would I'd like to uh, welcome my team member to to you the rest part. Okay, now I want to introduce the process of our project. The first step of the process is named the model generating. That means we need we needed to connect the Arizo to and the MI images the data together uh, by scanning the slices of MR, MRI images uh, into the Arizo. The Arizo can help us to combine them together into a whole draft model. Uh, by using some by using some functions, uh, however, after we did that, we found that we also construct the brain case of a brain. That means there's a brain case surrounding the brain, and we cannot operate the brain directly. So we decide to remove the scar. We use some applications and technologies to uh, do the MI image MI data preparation, so that we can remove the brain case without disrupting the uh, uh, brain uh, regions. Uh, I will introduce every results uh, after a, a, a step of a process. This is the result of the um, model, uh, model generation. As you can see, we scan the MI images and uh, generate a draft of the human brain uh, in the same time. The, the next process is a little step that we transform this draft model into a 3, 3D visualization model. That means 
you are, you can we can present it in the three D which uh, three dimensional. Uh, this video shows the three dimensional results of the draft of the model. Perhaps you should you should to wear a three uh, D glasses so that you can see it more clearly. But we cannot store it from our lab, <laughs> so I'm so sorry about that. Uh, the last process is named segmentation. Uh, after the 3D visualization, we have to get a draft model. But it's just uh, we can see the surface of the human brain, but we cannot get the internal detail of its structure. So we, we, so we decided to get the next step named segmentation. Uh, a human brain has many regions with different functions. So it was very important for us to separate them and color them in different colors so the user can uh, check one part of a human brain and get the detailed information. The algorithm we used in this step is named gray level algorithm. Uh, in, uh, in, MRI, in MRI imaging, uh, each region uh, has a gray level range so that we defined all grade level ranges for each of the region and scan the MR image again to extract a specific, specific region of a human brain with specific grade level range uh, so that we can highlight some parts of the human brain or even color the all segments in different colors. This video is the results, process and results of uh, segmentation. As you can see, we are scanning the MRI images and highlight three parts of the brain into red, green, and uh, it's too soft. Red, green, and blue, respectively. It's just to use the grid level algorithm to select them out. And uh, after we have, well, after we finished the segmentation, we found that it was a very useful function for us to do some extended function to generate some extended functions, such as region removal or active detection. Region removal is that we can remove some surface regions of a human brain so that you can check uh, internal structure directly, and the active detection is help us to highlight some regions that is active when uh, an individual took some physical actions, for example, when you are running or when you are watching some movie, some parts of your human brain should be active. So we will highlight it. This is the result of the, uh, remo uh, the region removal. As you can see in the left figure, we point out three parts of the human brain named both postural central gyrus the superior frontal gyrus and the superior and middle temporal gyrus. And uh, we remove them so that in the left, in the right uh, picture, you can see the structure below them. As, and this is, this is the active detection and we highlight the active parts into the red. Uh, and the, the fiber connective visualization is the last part of our process, but it's also the most important part. That's also, we, also why we named the project named fiber connective visualization. An uh, 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 MI image uh, was composed by many vector points, so that if we want to handle the MI image in detail, we need to handle these vector points. Uh, we find a way that we generated is Argent vectors by using some algorithms. Uh, a vector points in a MI image can be displayed as a three uh, as a uh, three multiple three symmetric matrix, as as you can see, like the A in the palm point. And then we use the algorithm to generate to a triangle uh, matrix so that so that we can choose, we can choose the largest value from the x x d y y and d z z and the argent value and use this value to generate the argent vector. Uh, uh, argent vector will include in, include three atom, uh, elements x y and z and use these three elements to uh, indicate the direction of three uh, D points. And after we generated all points directions, we use the Runge-Kutta methods to combine these 
points, these points into lines. Uh, however, in a fiber of human brain, the, mm, trans the direction is bi-directional, so we need to refine the original Runge Kutta method into bi-directional one. So that means we need to check every vector points one by one and uh, uh, change its directions into opposite one if it was needed. And this is the result of fiber connectivity visualization. Every point has been indicated as its directions and uh, it is the whole fiber connectivity of the human brain. In the future work, uh, that's what we will do in the next week or something or sometime later, we will combine this result with the segmentation, what I have told before, so that you can change two specific parts of your human brain and uh, the application will show the detail, fiber connectivity detail of the two specific regions, not the whole human brain. Okay, so finally we got our, uh, got our outcomes. So basically we got, we implemented two methods which is grid level algorithm used for our segment, segment and the bidirectional longer CUDA method for our fiber connectivity. And as you may know, we bought the commercial software, so we, we can use the software uh, in everywhere. So we just uh, record them in all of them into 3D movies, uh, like uh, shown before, and then uploaded it into YouTube. And uh, later, we may sort out all of our outcomes into an academic paper and see if any, anyone could publish it. So, and uh, our, our, we would like to appreciate our two professors, which is Dr. Bing Chen and uh, Mr. John Moran from Civics Lab. And uh, another person I'd like to sense is my roommate when I, every time I got desperate, desperate uh, he always encouraged me to continue, never give up. Okay? And uh, so at last we need to thank the University of Evansville uh, for offering of us uh, this charitable, charitable uh, chance to present our project here. Uh, these are the list we use in our reference list in our uh, project. So, do you make a question? And one thing I want to mention is, am I is totally harmless? If you, if you are curious <laughs> about that, don't, don't, don't be that, don't be hesitant if you want to do that. I do have a question. How many images, slices, did you have to put together to render your 3D? Well, there's thousands of them. Thousands of them? Yeah, that's uh, good. So you should, you should scan them together and uh, store all the all the data together and the Aviso and uh, use some functions from the Aviso to combine it into X, Z, and X, Y, and Z axis sections. Mm -hmm. So that's, then we can generate a human brain model from thousands of slices. Are there any other questions for our speakers? Well, let's thank them.